people as Roberta. We had a lot of beautiful discussion and a lot of beautiful experience has gone through that session. And after that, we had Dr. Nikita on the line. And yesterday, you know, it was truly colorful and awesome by the two sessions we had. On the first phase, we had a beautiful session from Lily. We had discussions on mindfulness, yoga, and especially cats, as, as we all know. And for the second session, we all know how Eric, the balanced approach, had taken the session to the next level. And with this third day, me personally and the team Adrian Talks is truly hoping, truly expecting to, do, to take the reaches to the next level. And for that, for the first slot, we have Ketki here for this beautiful session. So speaking about Ketki, I had gone through the life on a glyph. So I just realized that uh, she is taking the session. She is uh, labeling the coach as Phoenix Method Coaching. You all know Phoenix as a bird who rose from the ashes. And like with that, the life of Ketki, the experiences she had through her life, it is like, like a phoenix bird because she had a lot of troubles. She had a lot of past experiences that made her beautiful for the next phase. So she was, she's actually uh, settled in Dubai for the last 10 to 15 years. And she started the professional journey as a fashion retail industry. It was like, you know, uh, it was a dream job. But after working for so long, she felt so burned out mentally and both physically. So she had to take a break from that industry. And she went for her one of her next dreams. And it was to become an entrepreneur. Uh, actually, personally, me, I took uh, resembles a lot with that dream. Because I do want to become an entrepreneur. So I just felt a lot of resonation with her that dream. But you know what? The things work again at that time. Because when she decided to become an entrepreneur, things didn't go well as she planned. She had faced a lot of problems. She faced a lot of difficulties and she became burned out for the second time. So it was like, you know, a second deep within her life. But from the, she had, you know, a changing point. We all used to discuss, we all used to share that each and every person who is in this planet have a certain point in life, have a certain space in life. The, well, the life will be completely, you know, shifting to the next level. And that was a point in Ketki's life when she decided to become a coach in 2019. So from there, she is used to admire as a mindset magician. Okay, she is easily, she can change the mindset of other people through the magics that she learned through her life. Okay, we used to say that either the blessings, uh, a lot of us, a lot of people of us, have, you know, a lot of difficulties in our life. Either we can see it as a test, or we can see it as a punishment, or either we can see it as a blessing. In this space, Ketki used to see her limitation. Ketki used to see her face, uh, used to see her issues. Ketki used to see her difficulties as a blessing. So she turned those blessings into power. She turned those blessings into power and, you know, she fueled this to make the future much more better. So without any further ado, it's actually a privilege of me. It's actually, you know, a gratitude of me to introduce Ketki to this wonderful session. So with all due love, respect, and kindness, I'm truly welcoming Ketki to hand over the space. Over to you, Ketki. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sias. It, uh, that was an amazing introduction. It, it's, uh, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed right now, but thank you so much. I think I'm going to take you everywhere with me so you can introduce me and pep me up like that. <laughs> so really, I am so honored to be invited to be one of the speakers at Metanoia. And um, I really hope you guys enjoy the session with me because the topic that I'm going to talk about today is like she has said, it's very close to my heart, how we can elevate from I can't to I can. So without further ado, I will be sharing my screen and going through a presentation with you just so that you can see some of the pointers that I'll be talking about. Can everyone see my yeah, it is visible. Yes. Can you see it as a print? Yeah, it can be seen. <laughs> I'm not very good with technology, I must say. So is that okay? Do you see my notes as well on the side? Yeah, yeah, it is visible actually. Okay. Then uh, changing to next plan. Hold on. <laughs> oh, sure.
Okay, let me just mark this. And then I can put it on. There we go. Now, can everyone see my screen? Yeah, it's much more good. That's All right, amazing. So uh, the topic that I'm going to talk about today is elevating from I can't to I can't. So I want to ask everyone this question, and I know the question and answers will come later on. So I want all of you to think about this. Who do we consider as an icon? And now when we think of icons, we think of people who we consider inspiring to us. Some of our icons are celebrities. Some of our icons are our family or uh, colleagues, someone we know personally as well. But all of them have some attributes in common. So what are they? A person we consider as an icon is usually someone who is successful, inspirational, influential. We think he has it all figured out and he's also mentoring others, right? So I want to ask everyone, can we call ourselves an icon today? And what does calling ourselves an icon actually mean to us? Well, sometimes when we have to think about it, okay, am I feeling successful today? Am I feeling influential? Can I inspire people? Do I have it all figured out? Am I ready to mentor others? When we think of each of these attributes, sometimes we feel a pinch within ourselves because we, we keep telling ourselves, you know, I'm not successful yet. I don't feel inspiring yet. I don't know enough to be inspiring. I don't have that many people who actually follow me to be influential. I'm definitely not ready to become a mentor. So basically we keep telling ourselves, I can't because I have so much more to do before I become all of those things, right? So what happens when we tell ourselves, I cannot or I can't be an icon as yet? It means we are already proving ourselves right. Because when we start telling ourselves, I can't, we are already thinking of where are we lacking? Where, what are we missing? Do we feel we are qualified enough? Do we feel we are ready enough? All of those questions keep coming back to us. But basically, when we think of I can't, everything in us shows the same result which validates us saying, yes, you can't. So please don't, right? So these are some of the things that happens when we say I can't to ourselves. We prove ourselves right because we don't. We don't allow ourselves to even try. And here I'm going to use a couple of examples, okay? Suppose we say, we ask some people, do you know how to cook? Some of them will say, no, I can't, you know? I really don't know how to, I'm not even going to try, I can't. Even if we try to make something small for ourselves, we will tell ourselves, oh, it doesn't taste as nice. So why should I even try? Let's not even try, I can't. And then we feel shame because we do not perform at the highest level of our own expectations. We tell ourselves we are unsuccessful at it. And what is the point of trying something that does not guarantee success? The result of all of this is we prove ourselves right because the result is always the same when you go on telling yourself, I can't. So how would we feel if we can change this result? Sometimes when we think of changing the result, we try using the same behaviors and keep thinking, oh, I'm going to get another result. So we'll keep saying, oh, you know, I can't do that. I cannot. For example, if we go back to cooking, I cannot cook Chinese food, but maybe I'll try cooking something smaller. I'll make a salad. But that same fear, that same hesit hesitance is still there. And then what happens? Oh, the salad does not turn good enough. So we proved ourselves right. We can't cook. We can't do all of that. But we can change the result only when we understand what our thought pattern is. And now I'm going to start challenging you guys on how to change your thought pattern. But before we challenge it, we need to understand what it is, right? So let's go into this. 
our thought pattern. Let's start with the result, right? So all of us are already telling ourselves, I can't. So the result is, I can't, hence I won't. And the result is, I don't do it. So even when it comes to something like tennis, I don't know how to play tennis, but I play badminton and I play table tennis. So in a way, I kind of know how to use a racket and I know how to hit either a ball or a shuttlecock with it. But tennis, no, 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 I can't. Right? So now what happens? We go into the behaviors. So if I'm thinking of going into a tennis pitch, I'll be like, I'll, I'll start getting very defensive. No, you know what? Tennis is not for me. I'm not the right person to try it. We'll start making excuses. And even if we say, okay, someone will say, just take the bat, take the racket, hit something. We are not focused at it. And we are not prepared to even try and see if it's the same amount of energy and effort that we already use for the sports that we already know into some new sport because we don't even want to try. We've already convinced ourselves we cannot. So our behaviors validate that thought. What is the emotional state that we put ourselves into when we say, I cannot? We feel rejection, frustration. We feel overwhelmed because we're like, oh, we cannot. That means now I either I have to relearn this entire thing and we feel so overwhelmed by what new things we have to learn. So we like to stay in our comfort zone and say, no, you know what? I can't learn anything new. I can't try all of this because I'm not feeling good enough. So I'm going to stay where I am. And basically, we find ways to validate what we say I can't for. Now, where does all of this come from? Where does the feeling of I can't come from? It actually comes from a conditioned belief. And this conditioned belief, the reason I say conditioned belief is because a lot of us, I'm sure because most of us are coaches over here and mentors over here, we all know that scientifically, whatever beliefs we have to start believing, we have learned them from the ages of zero to seven years old. So as a child, we have already formed most of our beliefs and the rest of our life is just letting those beliefs play out. So as a child, if we have failed at something, if we have been compared to other peers or contemporaries who have maybe done it better than us, and we have been pointed out saying, you know what, you didn't do that well enough. All of those things start becoming a belief. Saying, oh, if I try something new, I won't be good enough. And then we have expectations saying, you will be good enough when you know this much, when you do that much. All of these things that we have learned in our childhood becomes our conditioned belief. And as we grow older, because we have continued to say, I can't, I can't, I can't, and we have gotten into that same form of feeling fear or the lack of knowing as an emotional state, we have always behaved in a way that will validate the fact that we don't know how to do certain things. And hence the result always is that you don't. And sometimes knowing that result, we don't even try. So this is our entire thought pattern. From our conditioned belief, we get into that emotional state, which also brings up the behaviors and the results are always the same, right? Now, here is where I'm going to challenge you all. How about we change I can't to I can? Then what happens with the same pattern? When we start saying I can, because now I have to ask myself, okay, this belief of I can't, does that really serve me? Is that helping me move forward in life? Is that helping me do the things that really bring me joy and happiness and my definition of success? If it does, then great, stick with it. 
If it doesn't, then we have to make a decision whether we want to keep it or we change it. And when we start changing it and start telling ourselves, I can, then what happens? We get into an emotional state which starts going from fear, it changes to excitement. Excitement because you're going to learn something new, you're going to try something new, the fear of failure has left you, and you're ready to learn from all of those failures, right? And with, with that emotional state of excitement, we get into behaviors where we're like, okay, let's try. Let's try everything. What is the worst that can happen? Let me talk to whoever I can. What is the worst that they can say? They can say no, but I'll move on and I'll keep trying. So we change our behaviors. And then what happens to the result? Once we start saying I can, the results also change. You do start trying new things. You do become one step closer to becoming the icon that you want to see yourself as and who you all see around you. So now let's get into asking ourselves on how we can change these beliefs, right? So three questions here. Does my conditioned belief serve me? Now, this is something that I spoke about earlier, but I want you guys to make a note of these questions and really get deeper into it in your own time. Because these type of questions make you go deeper and deeper. And sometimes to even go deeper into the answer is, does this uh, condition belief serve me? You can say yes or no. So I want, you, I want you guys to ask yourself five whys. If it is a no, it doesn't serve me. Okay, why doesn't it serve me? Because it stops me from learning new things. It stops me from trying new things. It stops me from living my true potential. Why is it stopping you from, uh, why are you scared of even trying? So like this, you keep asking yourselves five whys. And at the end of it, what happens is you get to the root of where that belief sits. And most of the time, it is something not enough within ourselves. Either I'm not good enough, I'm not intelligent enough, I'm not whatever enough. So once you get to that, then you can really ask yourselves, okay, how do I change this? And that is a complete exercise in its own self. And that will also go on to a much different session and a longer session as well. But it's a truly fun exercise, I must tell you. The second question I want you to ask yourself is, okay, now I've gotten over the fact that I want to change this I can't to I can. What will adopting a new belief about myself say about me? It means Oh, I'm ready to try new things. I'm ready to take risks. I'm ready to put myself out there. And what's the worst that can happen? Right? So you're changing your mindset. You're changing your emotional state, which will make you change your behaviors. And hence, the results also change. And the third question I want to ask, uh, I want you guys to ask yourself is, who do I want to be? Because at the end of the day, we'll have so many of these type of limiting beliefs that we need to change. But who do you want to be at the end of it once you've changed all of it, right? So at this time, you have to tell yourself, okay, I do want to be that person who is successful, who is inspiring, who is influential, who has it all figured out, or at least seems so, but then we can always go back and figure more things out and also be ready to mentor others. And that takes us from I can't to saying, yes, I am an icon. So thank you so much for giving me this time. And I think it'll be better for us to get into some question and answers because I'm sure these type of topics becomes more interesting when the questions start coming in.
So over to you, CR. Okay, thank you so much, Katrin. Firstly, I have to say, uh, when you were speaking, when you were giving us these things, I was actually thinking about some experiences that I had in life, you know, some breaking experiences that made me who I am today. And it was actually uh, an opportunity for me to rethink on my experiences, rethink on my life that I had. So from the personal side, I'm truly grateful for this time that you gave us to rethink on ourselves. So actually, firstly, from my side, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. And we can go for the questions. If any of the participants have anything to ask to get key, you can simply raise your hand. I will just unmute you. So I must say in, in all of these things, when I was uh, going through my whole uh, coaching journey, and like you mentioned, yes, I did try my hand at being an entrepreneur. And the reason I burnt out for the second time was I realized that even when it comes to burnout, it's not just physical rest. Because a lot of the times I kept telling myself, oh, if I just get enough sleep, if I just go for a holiday, you know, all of these things will go away and it'll be fine. But what I realized was there were deeper symptoms that actually caused me to really burn out. And when I started my entrepreneurial journey, there was so much I can't in my head already. And just reliving my life and going through the same behaviors the same results came and that was burnout. I had to end that journey just to start a new one, but so grateful for that journey. So, yes. Okay, I got some few questions from the YouTube side. So can I ask you? Yes. Okay, so the first question is, what was your life defining moment? Oh gosh, uh, I have to say, um, I think my life defining moment was my first time when I realized I was uh, exhausted and burning out was I was driving and I fell asleep at the wheel of my car at a signal. And though it was so, it was just for a couple of seconds, I jumped up and I can still feel the nervousness, the fear, the adrenaline, all of those things happening. Luckily, no one got hurt. Luckily, I didn't get hurt. But that was a wake-up time where I had to tell myself, uh, KP, something needs to change. You cannot continue like this. Because at that time, I, being a working mother, I was still trying to do everything. And I was still trying to be superwoman. And I realized that I'm not. And I don't want to be. And I do want to ask for help. And that started this whole journey. Okay, okay, fine. That's really interesting to hear. <laughs> and the second thing is, uh, before that, uh, the participant has suggested that uh, if the screen share is off, I think you can turn it off so they can see you oh, better. All right, okay. Okay, that's good, really. So the second question is, what defines a true icon? And what is the biggest lesson you learned from your failures? Oh, wow. Okay. So as a true icon, like today, after knowing everything that I know, and I've experienced all of these things, I feel a true icon is someone who openly talks about their failures, openly talks about what helped them learn and go to the next level. Because no one took a racket and hit the first tennis ball and became Serena Williams. You know, everyone has a journey. And a lot of the time, especially when it comes to successful people, everyone wants to know the key to success. What are your successful habits? What, what are the best tips you can give on business? Anything like that. However, there's so many lessons that one can learn from what did you try and why didn't it work? You know, so I, I truly believe that people who are open about what worked and what didn't work and are ready to still keep going and be consistent at it, those are my true icons. And um, those are for me, everyday people, you know, and even celebrities who dare to show their true colors. 
and who really talk about all of these things. And uh, to me, my clients are my icons, you know? Uh, a lot of them come to me with uh, whatever they're going through, whatever I can't, I'm not good enough they have about themselves. And we really go on this journey together and what I see at the end of it blows my mind. So they are my icons for me. And sorry, there was another part to this uh, question. What was that? Actually, that one was, what defines a true icon? According okay. to you. Okay, so that, that, uh, that is what defines the true icon for me, yes, for sure. Okay, actually, that was quite an interesting response that you gave. Because a lot of people used to admire their mentors or the people who are above them as their icon. But in your case, you used to look after everyone as an icon. That's actually yeah. my work. Really great. Yes. Uh, and uh, I, I feel we find inspiration everywhere. We find inspiration everywhere from everyone because there are so many different people who just inspire you with different, different aspects of their life. Some of them might be really good in business. Some of them might be really good in talking. Some of them might be really good at moving on from failures all of those things. So it's uh, hard to really just say, oh, this one person is iconic, though there are many in the world. Yes. Okay, that's really great. Thank you. And uh, let me sit. Do me a minute, please. Sure. You Thank you very much, yes. Um, thank you very much, Katie. That was indeed a lovely talk. And uh, what really touched me is how honest, um, how raw and how authentic you are in your presentation and in your story. And my question ties on to that sense of authenticity. When we work with, uh, with our clients and our mentees, how much are we allowed to be open and vulnerable with regards to our own insecurities and the process that we are going on? I'd love for you to share your insights on that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And first of all, Nafisa, it's so nice to see you. We've only spoken. <laughs> um, uh, that's a really good question. And I might be... I might have a completely different school of thought when it comes to a lot of the coaches out there. I am always 100% honest about myself. I am vulnerable about what I know and what I don't know. Because only when you are honest and you say that you don't know, do you allow yourself to learn. So a lot of the times, yes, I may know the concepts that will help my clients, but I'm sure as coaches, a lot of us know that the more coaching you do for others, you're also coaching yourself. So a lot of the time at the end of a session that I'm having with a client of mine, I will go back and I'll be thinking of, oh, you know, when she said that thing, it actually triggered something in me. So now I have to do that work for myself. And that is something that I bring to the table, even when I'm talking to my clients, because they need, or at least I feel so, because I like it this way with uh, my coaches, that I'm also human. And I also have these moments. And just because today I'm a coach, it's not like I found Nirvana. You know, it's not like nothing triggers me. I am still uh, a person who can feel all these things. But the difference is, I know the tools that can help me overcome it and still not go to a place which is very dark. So I, I stay as honest as possible with my clients. Thank you very much for that answer. It's a question that I always ask myself when, when we work with our clients. Just one more question, because you had mentioned about your own journey in, in, in burnout and what is your message to women who juggle multiple hats, who have several roles to tend to? What's your message to them? Um, ask for help. There's no, there is no shame in asking for help. You know, as women, we have so many talents. We can do anything and everything, but also we need a village because today I'm a successful uh, coach. I'm a successful mother because I have help. My husband helps me. The person who uh, works in my house helps me. All of these things help me be my true self for my family, for my friends, for my partner, for my clients. 
all of them. And yes, we can multitask and we multitask very well, but we don't always have to be the person to do it, you know, because we have to take care of ourselves. And I keep telling all my clients this, follow what they say on the airlines. When the oxygen mask falls, use it yourself and then help others. Because if you're not able to help yourself, how will you help someone else? So uh, that that's my uh, thing, uh, advice to all the women. Yes, we do wear many hats. Yes, we do have uh, so many things to juggle. Ask for help. It's fine. It's all good. You're still amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much. One last question from my part before I hand yeah. it back to Sias. You've been in the UAE and I think you, um, I just, I'm just curious about how establishing yourself as a coach in the environment here in UAE and it's an ever-changing environment here. It's very dynamic, very diverse. How has that experience been? And for someone who is in the process of establishing themselves, what message, what tips do you have for them? Yeah. Yes, that is a very good question. I would say first you need to open, you need to be comfortable with yourself and to really put yourself out there. There is, if you have spent time, money, effort into certifying yourself into becoming a coach and or to becoming anything in your field, you need to let people know because it's not that someone is going to sleep and have a dream and say, oh, you know what, Katie became a coach. So you have to talk about yourself. There is, if you don't talk about yourself and promote yourself, no one else is going to do it. And there is a way to do it with authenticity. And there is a way that can be completely different. But I'm sure once you have put that time and effort in yourself, please go out and talk about yourself. A lot of people will connect with you. And that's when you realize who is your client and who is not your client. One thing I uh, am very frank about, I am not everyone's coach and everyone is not my client. You know, there are certain people will um, connect with the way I am, connect with my personality, connect with my coaching style, and some people don't. And that's okay, you know, because it makes, it takes a, so many different people like us to make this entire world. So I would say start talking uh, about yourself talking about what you do and just what we do is amazing because it's in a way service to other people as well. So even when you're talking in a group and you hear something as coaches, no matter how much I tell myself, don't get into this right now. <laughs> this is not the place. But I do, I start digging deeper into it. I start asking them questions that probably they were not even aware of. You know, awareness is the biggest thing. A lot of people are not aware of themselves. So once you start that question, a lot of people will want to know more and will want to start talking to you about it. The next thing is get out there and network, you know? meet people, go out there. There's so many networking opportunities. Take that networking opportunity and go for it. Okay, thank you very much. Katie, I'm just curious, you've chosen to work with a partner. Was mm -hmm. that a very conscious decision? Would you recommend working as a team versus you establishing yourself individually? Ah, uh, another very good question. <laughs> So I've had a very bad experience in a partnership and I have currently, luckily, thankfully, having a good experience in the partnership as well. I think uh, what changed between the two of them was one, I did not know myself when I got into my first partnership. Hence, I did not make the wisest choices on who my partner should be. So I think that is the biggest thing. First, get to know who you are in whatever field of partnership you want to get into. Understand what uh, gifts you bring to the table and understand where you need that partner to add value to. And then go out looking for a partner. My first partnership was very lopsided, you know? So it wasn't that we were on the same page. So that didn't work out. And this time when I found a partner, we have we are on the same page. 
yes, we do have our ups and downs. Yes, we do argue and uh, have disagreements. But I think that also is a sign of a good partnership, you know. So having disagreements is great. Respectfully having the disagreements and hearing each other and understanding what is being said is also uh, a good thing. So that is where uh, my partner comes in. However, that's only one aspect of my business. So what I do is I'm an entrepreneur right now. I have my coaching business, which is going really well. And I also have another business with my partner, which is to organize masterclasses and retreats. I just finished one on 21st. So uh, putting that together is what I do with my partner. Otherwise, for the coaching, I'm on my own. All right. Thank you very much for those insights and for your openness, your patience with all my questions. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Over to you, Sias. Okay, thank you so much, Nathisa, for engaging KK with some beautiful questions. So one of the participants has asked, how difficult for you was to adopt a new belief system? So I personally think you have gone through a set of experiences and it forced you to expect or accept such new experiences in your life. So how difficult was for us, for you to adopt such new belief systems and patterns? Uh, thank you for that. It was, uh, it was not easy. It was not comfortable at all. It's because the belief system that we are used to is not something that started yesterday or even last year. This belief system has been in us for years together. Just think about it. If all our beliefs have already been um, formed by the age of seven, how long has that belief been with us that we can change it overnight? It's not possible. So that is why those three questions uh, is something that I asked myself. Okay, is this belief really helping me? It's, if it's not, then I have to really dig in deep and go into that conditioned belief and understand why is it not. For me, I think one of the biggest uh, conditioned belief was as a working mother, I have to do everything. You know, I cannot ask for help, otherwise I'll show weakness. You know, all of these things. And that is also something that uh, is conditioned in us, right? Because, oh, okay, you're not going to be at home looking after the child, you want to go out and work, but then you have to look after the house also, right? So that is a conditioned belief. So it didn't go overnight. It was a lot of accepting, a lot of setting aside my ego, a lot of all of those things. And it's, it's a journey. It is really a journey. And even today, there'll be some things that I still need to refine, you know, because we are like an onion. We have layers and the more you peel away the layers, you go deeper and deeper and there are more things that come out. So it's not an easy journey, but it is completely possible. And once you get the hang of it, it does get easier. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for that wonderful answer. So next, let me go to the person who raised hand first, Fatima Safa. Very good evening, ma'am. Hi. Good evening, sir. Hi. How are you, ma'am? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Ma'am, fine, alhamdulillah. Ma'am, I am working as a principal in Kashmir and mother of four kids. Now, oh. Sometimes feeling I just want to some tips from you because um, yes, I'm staying far from a, far away from my native place. I'm staying in Kashmir because here climate is too much cold. Sometimes I am feeling my inner mind. I am feeling too much tired. I can't. But it's just five minutes I will overcome it because in my inner mind I'm saying, oh, don't say like this. You want to do more work. You are a good principal. You are a good mother so that you want to do your responsibility. Even though sometimes I'm feeling too much tired and saying, oh, you take rest, you take rest. How can I overcome these thoughts? Because I want to do more work. I want to serve my society. If these negative thoughts are coming, I may be stopped. 
So mm. a few tips you can say a few tips for me. <laughs> Thank you so much for your question. And I can imagine how cold it must be there right now. And hopefully one day I will visit. <laughs> so for this sort of uh, <laughs> for this sort of a question, I first want you to allow yourself to celebrate the fact that you already do so much. You know, we are always the hardest yes. on ourselves. Yes. We are always telling ourselves we have not done enough. There is still more to do. Don't think like this. Don't have negative thoughts. But if you keep saying don't, don't, that more, more will happen, right? So how about you say, okay, you know what? Right now, I need to feel tired. I accept that I'm feeling tired. I am feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling overworked and I need to rest and I deserve this rest. Give yourself kindness. Give yourself patience and allow yourself to rest okay. everything will happen you already know you're already doing so well you're a mother of four kids how how do you do that I'm a mother of one and I'm so overworked at least I feel so you know you're already doing so much you are such a good mother and such a good principal I'm sure and you know just allow yourself some grace Accept that I need to take time to rest. And yes, things are, uh, I'm, I'm missing my native place. Accept it. Sometimes we don't want to accept the fact that we're feeling these things. And then you know what? Our negative feelings, they are like a child. What happens when a child, you don't listen to a child? That he'll still come and say, mama, 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 mama. Right? Your negative feelings are a child. So the more you listen to the child and say, okay, you know what I heard you now tell me, what do you want to tell me? The child will say, you're tired, you're missing your native place, you are overworked, you want, you need to rest, you need to do this. And you'll say, okay, fine. I heard you. Thank you so much. Are you okay now? The child will say, yes, yes. Thank you for hearing me. And he'll go and play. Right? So that also helps you to let it go and that will allow you to when you actually rest you get your 100% rest otherwise you're just not resting you are only you're tr not trying to listen to that negative voice which is a child you're just not trying to do and you also need to ask yourself why do I need to keep doing more are we human beings or are we human doings the more we keep doing we stop being, you know? So allow yourself some grace. Listen to the negative voice with, and think of it as a child. Once you listen to it, he'll go away. Thank you, ma'am. So I hope, I thank hope you, ma your, Thank you, ma'am, your precious advice. Ma'am, this is my mother. She, she is, <laughs> this is my daughter. She is reading in. Thing. Always she is attending in classes, these classes. Hi, ma'am. Hi. <laughs> Hi. She is reading here in 12. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> Once you visit here, ma'am, in Kashmir. Yes, I will. I will. It's on my uh, bucket list. Yes. <laughs> okay. We will be here. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, ma'am. Love you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it and good luck. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, Fatima Sapa. And each and everything Kaki answered has just, I think it illuminates everyone's mind. The simple expressions you used to give, the simple consideration, the, the entire way you spoke, it was really true. And I just yeah. have to say it out. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing in such a beautiful way. And the question next goes to Lam Lamia. Please unmute. Hello, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, first of all, I would really, I would like to apologize, apology myself for being not able to come on screen just because of my personal reason. Okay. 
first of all i would love to say that i don't know how to say about your openness throughout you speak you are so open and uh, yes you are being so hon- honest i don't know how to say that uh, actually in last two days i was there but i really wanted to ask some of the questions but i just put it in the chat box i don't come and ask but today i really wanted to ask because i don't know how i felt so close to you i don't know <laughs> thank you so much i really appreciate your openness thank you so much so i would love to ask um how did you uh, like even i uh, i do i did have so many worst times in my life and i still have so how did you uh, push yourself through your worst times i mean how did you control your emotions and how did you uh like accept everything and your i mean accept every uh, every bad times of yours and how did you push uh, yourself in your worst times oh uh, well first of all thank you so much for uh, not just putting your question on the chat but actually coming out and asking me and you're very sweet and very kind with your compliments thank to me you. So thank, thank you so much <laughs> um how did i face my uh, worst times okay so i have a little bit uh, of a uh, analogy that i use with my clients right so one thing is all of us know what a heart rate monitor looks like right in the doctor's office in the hospital we all know what a heart rate monitor is how do we know when the heart is beating we see a line going up and down in the monitor yes right uh huh yes yes ma'am only when we see the line going up and down in the monitor we know we are alive yes right and yes. how how do we know a person is no more the heart rate monitor goes silent it flat lines it's only on one yes. level right that means yes, the person ma'am. is dead yes. now if the heart rate monitor shows our heart beat as going up and down that is mm-hmm. our life every time there is an up there is a down and every time there is a down there is an up you know yes. if we were all yes. the time sad we are dead if we are all the time happy is it possible to be all the time happy never in one, in one day we'll go through some 100 emotions emotions that don't even have names we will go through in a days yes. days time so you know just knowing and accepting the fact that yes i'm having a bad time right now but let me feel the emotions i'm going to allow myself to feel the bad emotions to feel the sad emotions the negative emotions because once i process that and it gets out of my body is my body then free to feel the up emotions right so yes ma'am that, that's life every time there's oh a my down, god there is always an up so the next thing i will also tell you is don't strive for balance because balance means this flat line yes yes ma'am strive for harmony up and down up and down that yes, means ma'am. for the life <laughs> what a beautiful you. explanation thank you so much ma'am thank you so thank much you. for answering i'm thank so you. glad that i could i could see you at least oh, thank, thank you. you thank you so much adian talks also <laughs> thank you i can i can uh, hear the excitement in your voice so i'm happy that it connected with you <laughs> thank you thank you ma'am <laughs> thank you so much ma'am actually uh, you might be thinking why this guy is always speaking after each and every questions i can't stop uh, speaking about the way you explain each and every single little answers because you know uh, the most of the things you said i just read it here and there but when you speak it with experiences each and every single participant in here can feel it feel the vibration yeah. on the way that you are speaking so i just can't stop appreciating that fact oh thank it's you so really much <laughs> Okay, then the option to ask the next question goes to Adila Ali. You can answer, please. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, I just uh, raise my hand to express my gratitude. Um, when I think to share my feedback, first. thing that came to my mind that how can i share my feedback um i can't i am not good in english but i want to prove that uh 
i can do it um i want to change my i can't into i can that's yes. why i have my hand i'm so happy to hear you say that and you are already on the step to becoming an icon <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing you know the more you practice the better you're going to become and your english is amazing i understood everything you said so <laughs> you. i'm so happy you spoke <laughs> thank you thank you so much great adila i just want to appreciate you too for the effort you take to become an icon really great yeah. next uh, shafin you may be some note hello hi hello ma'am hi thank Please you so much <laughs> uh thank you so much uh, for giving us this lecture mm -hmm. i will ask you only one question how you people are maintaining this positiveness throughout the sessions i'm really surprised oh okay thank you you are seeing me only for one hour so it's easy to <laughs> to be positive for this hour you should have seen me this morning i was uh, i was so nervous i was like oh my god i'm going to give a talk there are going to be hundreds of people on this talk what will i say how will they feel and i'm so bad with technology as you've seen in the beginning so i was i was telling sias can we practice when can we practice what can we do so all that finished and so you're seeing only the positive me now so thank you so much for thinking that this is how i live my life <laughs> thank you so much ma'am <laughs> okay very okay, great i can't stop my laughing okay <laughs> next uh, geeta shri sam you know uh, sorry before the next question comes i also want to just let everyone know is you know life is fun life is meant to be enjoyed life is not happening to you it is happening for you so this is what i do i'm always joking around with my clients or with everyone i always keep it light you know because if you can laugh at yourself if you can laugh at the things that happen in your life you you won you have won at life really really great that's really great advice i will keep to my heart for a while <laughs> next geeta shri uh, good evening ma'am and um, so uh, i want to actually ask about like you telling us about icon and how like you get that um, that i can't thought from the beginning of our childhood so uh, today my question is that uh, i have been like thinking about this uh, why i have this feeling that i can't do anything at all properly and that like whenever i start doing something i just stop in the middle of it and can't continue my work at all like i had always had this inferior feeling that uh, i can't just continue this thing is not for me this was never my why did i start that this started a guilt conscience in myself so like i had actually like you told us so why i can't that question that i had thought it uh, to the stage where i like i can remember that there has been always a statement when i was a kid that this thing is not for you you always drop the things in the middle you can't do it so i just want to like ask i'm not sure that is it because of what other people meant can't do or is it because something deeper inside me had like accepted that i can't do anything properly like can't continue it okay thank you so much for that question and um, you know that's that's where it all starts when we are kids when we are much younger if something we have tried and it has not turned out according to someone else's expectations we are told oh you're not good enough you know everyone has this expectation that you should try it for the first time and be brilliant 
and if you fail yeah. then it's not for you you know so i don't think we encourage people enough to fail because i feel especially when you're kids and especially when you have the opportunity even as adults even as adults if you have an opportunity to try it and even if it's not successful it's okay the win of this entire situation is that you have tried because when we were smaller if something like this has happened and at that time you've heard oh you're not good at it you haven't practiced enough you haven't done enough then you don't even try i'll give you an example my son he wanted to learn how to play the guitar i didn't force him he just came and said i want to learn how to play the guitar i said fine okay found him a teacher got him the classes everything now he was only 7 when he was learning how to play the guitar and then after that me being the mother who you know felt like oh my god he can become the next rock star i kept telling him okay practice every day for half an hour practice at least for 5 minutes and i used to keep on after him after him after him after him you know what he did he he left playing guitar he doesn't want to play guitar anymore because the fun of playing guitar and learning something at on his own way in his own way was taken away from him so sometimes a lot when these things happen repetition and repetitively to us we start believing it we start believing it that oh i haven't learned enough i haven't practiced enough i haven't done enough and anyway i'm not good enough so why try you know and that is your belief so you have to go deeper and deeper to the place where what was that one thing that i did that i was told i was not good enough and then there's a lot of healing that needs to be done around that you know which a lot of my clients i work with who have this issue and we do like healing around that belief and then they are ready to change the belief to i can so yes it's just a belief that's stopping you and the more you can somehow get into it and heal that the more you'll be ready to say i can and just try there's nothing wrong in failing don't feel guilty about it don't feel shame the worst the most brilliant billionaires have failed and they they've still made it so i hope that helps okay thank you thank you so much uh, actually yes sir it, thank you it's yeah. helped Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you so much. So sadly, our time is actually ticking up. So I just want to conclude the question and answer session with the last question. So all these people, including me, we are actually striving to become an icon. Okay. So all the session, all the topics you said was about how to become an icon. So the last question is. What is the greatest advice or what is the greatest tip you can give to us to become an icon? Oh my gosh. Um I think the only tip I I think this entire quest the question and answer round has been little nuggets here and there but I think the best advice is just do it. Just keep at it. You know the more you know yourself and the more authentically you put yourself across to people it will happen. You know there is there is something uh, i do a lot of work around manifestation which is understand okay if you're looking to be an icon ask yourself how will i feel once i become an icon you will feel amazing you will feel all excitement you will feel achieved and successful whatever however you define success for yourself right name that emotion once you name that emotion start feeling it from today because when you live in that emotion from today you are manifesting your iconic status you know and then the more you keep living in that the more you start believing it and then what happens the whole world starts conspiring with you to make it happen because all of us are energy everything around us is energy so if we put out good energy 
that is what is going to happen when you say i can things can when you say i can't also things won't so i would say just do it find your manifestation energy and just live it from today okay okay that's really great thank you so much and thank you so much for having this wondrous time that we had it was actually so beautiful and heartfelt even though i was seeing i am seeing you for the first time the radiance and the aura that you set out to all the participants were truly outrageous and i just have to appreciate that fact and as a token of love as a token of uh, token of appreciation we just have to share from the team of radiant talks to you oh. is the host ready just a minute then Oh that's so sweet you guys thank you so much i really appreciate this and i really appreciate adian talks for uh, inviting me to this session and um, for giving me this time and space it's been very special to me as well thank you to all the participants who have uh, been so patient with me and have been so gracious with your time with me and asked me all these questions i uh, really appreciate it thank you so much thank you so much get key for lending your precious time with us it was really an insightful session and we just have to appreciate the effort you take to put on this wisdom to us to encourage us to change our life for to become an icon and thank you so much from my bottom of my heart and from the entire team of alien talks thank you so much we'll meet you soon in the future for such yes. more collaborations yes yes thank you bye everyone thank you so much